Hi, I'm Hannah Bakey. I am an academic advisor, so I work in the financial aid and advisement office, and I'm also a Title IX coordinator. So today I'll be talking to you about Title IX, your rights, and the college's responses to reports of sex discrimination. Title IX is part of the Education Amendments Act, and basically because we receive federal funding, so you as a student may have student loans or Pell Grants, because we get those from the government, we are held to certain requirements. And one of those is Title IX, which means that as an institution, we have to ensure that no student or member of the college community is denied access to their education or any of our programming because of sex-based discrimination. So uh, first, I do just want to throw out there that as I kind of drill down and define this, it's going to include some content on sexual violence. So if that's something that makes you feel uncomfortable, that distresses you, pause the video, walk away, come back. If you can't come back, if it's just too much, I'd encourage you to at least touch base with me so you understand our processes and your rights. But first and foremost, do what you need to do for yourself. Um, really, sex-based discrimination was first adapted to apply mostly to athletics. So our early cases of Title IX involve, you know, ensuring that locker rooms are the same for men and women's sports teams, that their amenities look similar, that their facilities are operating in an equitable way. As of late, we've seen that evolved more to include things like sexual harassment and sexual misconduct. So something like a report of rape or of sexual assault, of non-consensual touching, harassment language that's sexual in nature, or any you know discrimination based on someone's gender or sex would fall under that umbrella and, and would be encompassed in our Title IX and sexual misconduct policy. So, you know, personally, I am a big believer in empowering the people who have been affected by this discrimination to do what they want to do. Uh, we have institutional procedures set up, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little later, but ultimately our response is to connect with you as the victim and to get you your resources, your rights, and your options. So should we receive a report, I would you know, reach out to that individual, bring them in, and, and talk about what happened, connect them with some different on and off campus services, and touch on you know the next steps that are available to them but ultimately it's my goal that that decision is yours as the person coming forward that you know whoever is making that report is able to take the steps that they want to take yeah so by grievance procedures um, we mean the processes and procedures that we've developed to respond to reports of sex discrimination to investigate them and adjudicate them. What that means is that, you know, once a formal complaint is received, we would reach out to our third party investigators who are completely separate from the college. They are never here unless there's an investigation. We do that just to make sure there's no conflict of interest that, you know, they're working as unbiased as possible and they would interview the party who was victimized, the party who was alleged to have committed this discrimination, and any relevant uh, witnesses or, or parties to, to what had happened. Now, after that investigation takes place, the investigators will draft up a report and you know include all the evidence that they've gathered, things like that, and both parties would get a copy of their report, and each party is to select someone to assist them through this process that we are calling their advisor, and their advisor would also get a copy of this report. After the report has been received and both parties and their advisors are given an appropriate time to respond, which is 10 days, we would have a hearing. And the hearing would consist of hearing board members, which are coming from our Judiciary Board on Student Matters, their staff members of the college who have been appointed to serve in this role. And each party would show up to the hearing with their advisor and the advisor would question the other party. Now, something that I think is important to note there is not every question needs to be answered. The hearing board will determine 
yes, this is a relevant question, no, this is not a relevant question, and then, you know, answer accordingly. After the hearing, the hearing board members will get together, they'll deliberate, and they'll decide, was this a policy violation? For all of these investigations, we use a preponderance of evidence standard, meaning that they'll be looking to see if it's more likely than not that this happened, and if it happened, did that violate our policy? And they'll, they'll issue sanctions accordingly if necessary. Sure, so as we look at incidences that are sexual misconduct, that are sex-based discrimination, it often is touching on some really private aspects of people's life. So it's important for me to make sure you all know that that information is kept as confidential as possible. If we're setting up accommodations or protective measures, you know, someone needs extended time because something happened, we have to switch classes, information will be shared, but not everything, just to the extent that we can make sure that student gets what they need. It won't be a well, everything that was reported happened, so do this. It would be more of a, you just need to help this person out. Um, we keep information sharing at an absolute minimum. Really, names are shared if they need to be for sanctions and accommodations, but beyond that, not really. Um, it's important to me that through this process, you know that we're looking for policy violations. This is not a hearing board to examine someone's character or their integrity as an individual. This is looking at did X happen, and if it did happen, did it violate our policy? And to keep in the spirit of that, it's important to me that that information is kept as confidential as possible.